Hi, everybody. Christy here. And Edith over here. Welcome, gardeners. And wannabe gardeners. And people who listen because they are our friends and family, and they kind of have to. And folks who don't give a lick about gardening, but enjoy jokes and fun stories. Don't forget members of the garden party. Hello, garden party. Okay, friends. This here is a very special episode of Upside Down Tulips. It's our one-year anniversary. I am ready to celebrate. How about you? Yeah, you may all know we have tossed around a lot of ideas and how to mark the occasion. Should we do a drunk? Or in verse, like in Shakespeare? Or in our ladybug voices? <laughs> or in an ice water bath? Or as town criers as we shoe horses? I really think that last one needs reconsideration. <laughs> we are weird. Finally, <laughs> we decided to gather some of our favorite moments over the last year and share them with you folks. To kick us off, here are our favorite opening jokes. Which until last month, I didn't know were supposed to be good jokes and try to find the worst jokes I could find. That explains a lot. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> hey, Christy. Hey, Edith. What do you get when you cross a canary and a lawnmower? What? Shredded tweet? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. <laughs> what do you call a pickle doctor? I don't know. A dill pusher. What do you call the pickle that got run over on the highway? I, I, I don't know. Road dill. <laughs> Who is the pickle's favorite artist? D D D Salvador Dilly. Very good! Get out! <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I got that. That was very good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners in Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening is becoming very popular. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. It's our one-year anniversary. Upside down happy anniversary, Edith. Happy anniversary, Christy. And happy anniversary to our exceptional and enigmatic engineer sitting mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. If this is your first time or you've been with us the whole year, welcome or welcome back. Now, folks, if you've been listening to us for a while... You know, we started Upside Down Tulips when we were in quarantine. Edith and I are theater makers, and we saw all our jobs disappear last year. And we sat six feet socially distanced with masks on in my backyard wondering, what do we do with all this creative energy? It was Christy's idea. <laughs> Saying. <laughs> so we decided to have a podcast. We didn't know how long it would last, Little did we know that a year later we would have over 13,000 downloads. In every single state, we have a listener, including Nebraska. Shout out to Nebraska listeners. And we have listeners in over 50 countries. So thank you for listening. And here we go. One of my favorite moments in the last year was in way back in episode two. Wow. Which was the first two commandments, water what? and mm -hmm. mulch. Yes, I remember, water and mulch. I was discussing a mystery plant in the compost, and we thought it might be a squash plant, but we just didn't know for sure yet. And Edith, you had a unique idea that was originally cut from this episode, and our exceptional and easygoing engineer had to be talked into putting this moment back in. And it remains one of my favorite moments from the last year. Me too. Well, I can tell you this is that I, this week, have a garden mystery. Oh, good. Oh, I love mysteries. I have a mystery plant growing in oh. my compost pile. Oh, now I think it's in the squash family, uh -huh. but it's not zucchini. Okay. That does not look like zucchini, and uh -huh. it doesn't look like summer squash either. And so I don't know. I have to, when we're, when we're done, you'll have to come into the backyard with me. Okay. And maybe I'll take a picture, and I can put it up on our website and our Facebook page, and people can help me figure out, help okay. me ID what this, it's some kind of mystery squash, but it doesn't look, I don't think it's zucchini or summer squash. It's really hard to tell, like, 
a spaghetti squash from a butternut. Butternut just by the could leaves. be. It could be. I mean, it's obviously something you've either eaten or planted before, right? right? Or somebody, some bird, right? Well, those are pretty big seeds for a little bird butthole, but sure. <laughs> Like poor bird. It's like, oh, it was a tough day. <laughs> and Edith, I should let you know yeah. that I have another squash plant in my compost right now. Christy, so do I. <laughs> Those poor birds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, if I hadn't said hole after butt, it wouldn't have been as funny. It was the butthole. Yes. It just kind of cracked me up. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, thankfully, our exceptional and easygoing engineer put it back in. Yeah, I'm so glad. Well, okay, so one of my favorite moments happened 38 weeks after that in the perennial vegetable episode. Remember we were talking about um, the Pucker Butt Pepper Company from North Carolina and how they had the hottest peppers in the world. And they knew because there is a, what do you call, measurement, a unit of measurement, and it's called Scoville, but I made a mistake. So the following week, I made a correction. Here's the correction when I should have said Scoville. So um, before I ask what's going on in your garden, I think we need to make a correction from last week. Okay. So this was, of course, my slip up of the tongue. There it goes again. You know, I said it was a Schofield heat measurement where we were talking about pucker butt peppers. Uh-huh. It's not. It's oh. Scoville. It's the heat measurement. Is it possible, Edith, that you were thinking of the great actor Paul Schofield? Who is from yes, a man for all seasons. Who's so hot? Yes. <laughs> yes. Is he dead? Or I? I bet he is passed oh, away. But he, he's still hot. Yeah. He's hot. The Oscar winner <laughs> of Man for All Seasons. That right? must have been what it was. Yeah. Yes. So, Christy, you know what that proves to me? What? How close we've become that you now know why I make mistakes and where it comes from. Yes, and your sexual preferences for Paul Schofield. Well, okay, there's that too. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm glad you caught that. I, I wouldn't have put two and two together. Up next, one of my favorite moments from episode five. Let us turn up the beat and learn how to harvest. This was a discussion on how to harvest tomatoes. Edith, you had a great tip on how to ripen green tomatoes, and I had a deep confession to make. Uh-oh. Uh, one more thing I want to say about tomatoes. If you do pick uh, one that's green, you know, you... I, I, <laughs> I know well, what you're going to say. The but wrapping it in newspaper. Yes. I do that every year. I do that before the first frost. Did you have a horrible experience well, with that? this fall, we had that hard frost. Yeah, like boom. So the day before, what did everybody do? You see it all over Facebook, too. It's like, I'm pulling all my tomatoes. I had a huge tomato a year, just so many. I probably had 50 green tomatoes. Wow. Put them all up, wrapped it up in newspaper, put it on my attic. Did you but, forget about them, Christy? <laughs> um, Edith, did you? They're still there. Oh! <gasps> It doesn't smell. What's in the box? Like rotten Campbell's soup in this well, house. I, yeah, I would check on them, and then I got busy directing plays, and then then I then you just got that point where you just know you just it was too late. Wow. So I've yeah. got like I don't know four boxes. Oh, of tomatoes. I'm gonna guess there's there's nothing there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna guess so too. I'm gonna be pretty darn sure. Yeah, it's a big tomato paste at this point, but smelly. Even the paste is gonna be gone. I bet it's just all gone. So, Christy, that, that was an exciting moment when you uh, opened that box. And there was hardly anything in there. No, hardly anything. It was flat, just flat and brown. <laughs> it looked like it just gave up. It looked like Paul Schofield. <gasps> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. You know, not only is he the man for all seasons, uh -huh. he's the joke for all seasons, oh, for Edith. Us. We don't mean to be, you know, we don't. That just came out. Up next is a selection from the Upside Down Tulips Garden Party. They have selected as one of their favorite moments one of our pod plays, Stranger Garden Things. 
previously on Stranger Garden Things. Just wait right here by this compost pile, Rhubarb. I'll be right back. Please don't leave me alone, Christy. It feels strange here. Ah! Rhubarb! Rhubarb? Barb! And now, Stranger Garden Things. Barb, where are you? Thanks for helping me search for rhubarb, Edith. Where are we? Your garden is all upside down. Even though this garden contains the same locations and infrastructure of your garden, it is much darker, colder, and obscured by an omnipresent fog while ash-like spores drift through the air. It appears we have slipped down a portal into an alternate dimension. Ooh, check out how everything is overgrown with ropey root-like tendrils and biological membranes covering practically every surface. It all feels strange, Christy. I'm scared. Let's get out of here. But we have to find my rhubarb. I don't like that strange-looking compost pile. Oh, no. What is that strange thing sitting on top of it? Barb? No. Oh, it's just a spaghetti squash. The seeds must have germinated because the compost pile wasn't hot enough because you haven't turned it in a year. Wait, look over there. That thing is even stranger. With all this fog and ash-like spores, I can't tell. What is that stranger thing? It appears to be a very, very large zucchini. This is what happens when you don't harvest zucchini in time. Zucchini is best harvested when the fruit is about six inches long. If left unharvested, zucchini squash will easily oh reach... Oh my oh. gourd! It sees us! Run! Wait! What about me? Sorry, rhubarb. Normally we don't mind things upside down, but this is all just too strange. <laughs> Look! Need sugar. A little trivia about Stranger Garden Things is that my rhubarb really is next to my compost pile. And not only does Karen Slack play the voice of rhubarb, but she also does the voice of this giant zucchini plant. Yeah, that that, that was, um, I, and I love the way you put a little bit of info about harvesting zucchini in there. Some of the best sound effects from our yeah. um, wonderful engineer. Fantastic sound effects. Yep. Now, the next piece, the next moment, doesn't really need a lot of setup. Let me just say this. The Christy and I started taking note of observances a certain day, like what is June 10th? You know, what is... And that this next thing came out of that. We simply couldn't believe this was really an observance. It is still National Garden Month. Christy, could I say something here? Mm -hmm. So do you know that National Garden Month is shared with 54 other things that share this month? I'm not surprised. I looked it up. Can I tell oh, you some of them? Yeah, I would love okay. to hear them. It's also Alcohol Awareness Month. Good idea. For those of us that are not aware of the wonderfulness of alcohol. <laughs> Hello, alcohol. <laughs> Especially since <laughs> quarantine. There's, it's also Irritable Bowel Syndrome Awareness Month. Oh, yes. Now, see, that's important. It is. We should bring awareness to that. And I'm aware of it now. Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Now, that's a card that's hard to find. Yes. But I will look or make my own. And a party that's not that fun to go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gourd, that was funny. Oh, my gourd. Christy. <laughs> a party. <laughs> Good work, Christy. This next one, all I'm going to say about it is that this was episode 22 and Edith has a story about a scam call. Also, we made a, a, a point in this podcast not to swear. Of course, we swear outside of the podcast. Mm -hmm. We can be a little salty sometimes, but mm -hmm. we want to make sure the podcast is accessible to a lot of other different types of folks. 
the most important part about this clip coming up is that this was our Christmas special <laughs> episode. <laughs> Not a Hallmark special. <laughs> Christy, yesterday I answered a scam call. <gasps> now, you know, you know it's going to be a scam because it says unknown uh-huh. or it says it's a number that you don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what got into me, but I did. I answered this call. And I had heard about this scam. So this man says, your social security number has been used. Again, you probably don't even know about this, he said. It has been used in southern Texas on the border. And it is involved with the drug trade and child trafficking. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he was making it as horrible as he could. And I knew it was a scam, so I was very supportive. I went, oh, I'd go, oh, no. Oh, you're terrible, Edith. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I almost said, oh, my gourd. But then I thought that might give it away. So so then he said, um, so uh, I, need to verif- I need to verify your name. And I said, okay, June O'Halloran. He goes, can you spell that? And I told him. And then he said, and I need your social security number. Oh, clever. And I said, do you think I'm an idiot? (laughs) And he he said, yes, I think you're an idiot. (gasps) And I said, I am not an idiot. And he said, you're a mother (gasps) And I said, and I was actually kind of laughing. I go, you're a mother (laughs) Oh, my God. Merry Christmas, June O'Halloran. Thank you very much. <laughs> Listen, I have a little follow-up to that. I can't help but answer scam calls sometimes. I just can't because I think it's kind of fun. The latest scam is a warranty on your automobile. For some reason, it's always, what is it, a Pontiac? It's some car I have never owned. So uh, what I've been doing is I've been listening to them, and then the first break I can get, I say, Merry Christmas. And there's this pause, and it dep- and what comes after shows the character of the person. So there's this pause, and one of the people said, uh, Merry Christmas to you, too. Even though, it well, you know, it's June. Or July. Or July. And then another woman went, she scolded me. Ma'am, it is not Christmas. And she hung up on me. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun. Thank you. Edith, that's good. Thank you. So the fun that I found in the pandemic answering scam calls, I'm continuing (laughs) to have it. That just shows how poverty stricken my life is. Maybe, maybe not. (laughs) So Christy, as shocked as you were by the MF word, I was so shocked with your gift of the Magi when you wrote, when the first cold read I did, I almost fell off of the chair. And I think that's maybe all the setup we need is this next piece really shows Christie's dark side. Tomorrow is Christmas and I'm broke. Oh, I wish I had enough money to get Christie a real Christmas gift. Oh, how I dreamed of finding something fine and rare and worthy of my friend. Why, who is that at the door? Why, it's my neighbor, Henry. Edith, I've often admired your beautiful pile of compost in your backyard. There is no pile richer, darker, or more full of worms. Would you consider selling it for 50 bucks? My prized compost? Oh, Henry, what a wonderful idea. Yes, haul it all away. Now I can get Christy a Christmas gift. She needs a new pair of garden gloves so badly and I saw her admiring an excellent pair at the local nursery just the other day. If I leave right now, I just may have it wrapped and ready when she comes over for coffee. Merry Christmas, Christy. Why, what is that puzzled look on your face? Edith, what happened to your compost pile? Don't look at me that way. I sold my compost pile because I couldn't have lived through Christmas without giving you a present. My yard debris and table scraps will make wonderful compost again. 
I just had to do it. You don't know what a beautiful, nice gift I've got for you. You sold your compost pile? Yes, sold and hauled off. All your compost is gone? Yep, it's sold and gone. <laughs> well, here is your Christmas present, my friend. Just look in the bag in the wagon by the door. It's a compost screen. Just perfect to remove large clumps, debris, and stubborn materials in my compost pile. My compost grows so fast, I will surely use it some day soon. Now it is your turn. I didn't have time to wrap your gift, so here. Now your hands will be protected from blisters, calluses, and slivers. Pull your hands out of your pockets. I want to see how they look on you. My dear friend, in order to get the money to buy your compost screen, I had to sell my hands. Oh, 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 oh my gourd. <laughs> oh, Edith, don't you see? The Magi were wonderfully wise men who brought gifts to baby Jesus. They invented the art of giving Christmas presents. Of all who give and receive gifts, we are the wisest. We are the Magi. But you don't have any hands. Yeah, I really didn't think this all through. I gotta hand it to you. You make a really good point. No, no, we are not doing this. It just all got out of hand. Stop it. But on the other hand, it was pretty dramatic. I am leaving. Um, I can't open the door. Can someone give me a hand? <laughs> what I loved about this, Edith, was that I sent you the script really late before our recording, so you didn't get a chance to read it. So when we were reading it cold, and the hand severed uh, part was uh, on a page turn, so you had to turn the page over and read it out loud for the first time, and how you lost it was just great. Uh, yeah, it, I lost it the second time, too. That was not even acting. It was like, <laughs> oh, 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 my gosh. <laughs> and I also played the voice of Henry. I'd forgotten that. That was me, too. <laughs> that was you? Yeah. Oh, Henry. Oh, oh, Henry. Oh, Henry. Oh, nice. So, Edith, this yes. is our 50th episode of all of these episodes that we've done. Are mm -hmm. there any whole shows that were your favorite? Well, that was, you know, that was hard, but I settled on our Thanksgiving show for a number of different reasons. First of all, we had so much help. We had listeners write in their favorite Thanksgiving true stories. So we got stories, things like um, from Pamela. She told us about the crabby hostess who put the jacket on the back of her guests' chairs while they were still eating. The because pumpkin, it was time to go. Yeah. Pumpkin pie, <laughs> get out. Just like that. Um, remember Sally, who the newlywed, and she had her husband's entire extended family. She had one friend there, her blind friend, who sat next to her. And the family started criticizing, you know. Oh, my gosh, look at the lumpy gravy. Oh, only two kinds of potatoes. And Sally got really, really upset. And she's, that's, she told her friend that. And she goes, I don't know what to do. And her friend said, let me handle it. And her friend said... Well, it looks beautiful to me, <laughs> which was such a sweet, mm -hmm. sweet story. Um, the story about Rick trying to cook a smoked turkey. Can you even imagine? Because it was already smoked. It was already it was smoked. He, he cooked it into a salt lick, basically. Here, this story was so tender. From, from Douglas in Tennessee, where somebody would, they always went to their grandmother's house for Thanksgiving. And someone stationed themselves behind the grandmother with the hand lightly on her shoulder. So that when somebody said, is there more cranberry? Her instinct would be, I'll get it. But someone standing behind her kind of just pressed down and goes, no, I'll get it. You stay. That's so sweet. That is so sweet. Such a great story. It was great collecting all those letters. You know, we should do that again this Thanksgiving. Oh, we should. And and then sometimes just funny, like... um. Karen, living in that little, little, tiny apartment in New York, deciding to host uh, Thanksgiving and telling everybody to bring a side. And every single person brought potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that episode so much. That's a lot of carbs. That is a lot of carbs, yeah. 
but good carbs. And butter. If it's too much carbs, just add butter. That's really kind of my uh, suggestion. What's your favorite show? I look back at episode 25, which is about winter sewing. Mm. It's called Take Out Your Jugs and Learn How to Winter Sew. It's certainly the best title. <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason why it's one of my favorites is because this is a technique I learned a while ago that gives me a lot of joy. It's about it's a form of outdoor seed starting that people can start in January, February, and continue even through the summer to sow seeds outside in plastic containers like milk jugs. And I've just been so... Um, my heart has been so warmed by everybody else who's starting to do it and the success that they're getting at it. Christy, we've had more comments on that episode than I think any other episode. One of our garden party members wrote in and said that um, she says that every show there's a bunch of practical advice and tips. The one that stands out for me, though, is the winter seed starting in jugs. I've never heard of it before, and I'm anxious to give it a try. Mm -hmm. And then a, a lot of people have written in to say how their winter sewing has been going. You taught so. me. You taught me how to winter sew. I'm one of those people. I should have written in to you, except that I see you every week, you know, four feet away. <laughs> so. <laughs> My favorite pod play goes back to episode seven. And this was called, Wait, What? Still Planting? So Cool. Edith wrote this and performed it. And there's just something about how beautiful the message was, how great the engineering was for the music from our fabulous engineer that just together unified something so heartfelt and beautiful. We were in the thick of the quarantine and this was just something that made me feel great. Has 2020 made you feel like you've been rode hard and put to bed wet? Do you think you're going crazy? Are your days full of stress and your nights full of scary pandemic dreams? May we suggest growing something? You can grow something almost anywhere. On a windowsill, a porch, a balcony, a community garden, even on the roof. Become a gardener. You'll be able to say things like, think the rain will hurt the rhubarb, completely unironically. You'll learn that rutabaga is not just what actors say in a crowd scene. Rutabagas are things you grow. Pass the time. The long, long times. It's only August. With the speedy radish and the slow-growing carrot. Water it, feed it, love it, then eat it. Or smoke it, we don't judge. Remember, in these tough times, bookmark your sanity. Grow something. Brought to you by the neighbors who hear you screaming in the night. Beautiful and funny, and the first time we use the phrase, grow something. To me, that feels like it's at the DNA of what we're trying to do, Edith, is to just create a community of people growing something. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be award-winning, but get your hands on some soil and grow something. Christy, first of all, thank you for picking that one, and thank you for your beautiful intro to it. You know, usually you speak so beautifully that when you don't, it's extra funny, which takes us to the blooper section. Join us next week for Feedly, Feedling, Feedling. <laughs> Join us next week for Feeding and Fertilizing Your Garden. <laughs> Write to us at Upside Down Tulips at Gmail or at our website at Upside Down Tulips. Dot com or clink on the link in the show notes. I said clink. <laughs> I did say clink. <laughs> I'm Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I'm going to clink that link. <laughs> Hello, ladies. My sister introduced me to your podcast and I've been binging. What? Binging. Binging. <laughs> bing. 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 <laughs> merch. 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 Say merch, everybody. See how your head tilts. You can't help it. Merch. 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 We got merch. Yep. All right. <laughs> like the shortening of everything. Nothing's adorable. It's adorbs. Yeah. Oh, that's such a bad We don't word. have merchandise. We have merch. Why don't we have dyes? Why do we have to go with the beginning? We have dyes. <laughs> <laughs> because it could also be a grand dyes. People would be confused.
You can't have an aggrandize, can you? Yes. Can you? No. No, no. you can't. <laughs> No. And those are just some of the bloopers that actually made it into the episodes. You should hear the ones that don't make it in at all. Uh Right, Edith? Yeah, right, right. Not good for public consumption, perhaps. (laughs) And that last one was from our Tis the Gift to be Simple Garden Gifts episode 21, which is the very first time we were able to offer merchandise to everybody. Yeah. And we still are offering it if you're interested. Merch. Merch. The next thing here is, well, it's something new. It's like a world premiere right now. It is the sixth old woman who lives in a shoe. These are monologues that uh, obviously written five of them before uh, with the fabulous Billy McBride playing the old woman. And there, it, what's so cool about this, it has an arc. She starts one way as a hard living, smoking woman, and she really changes. So this is this is the new one. This is for you listeners. Enjoy. Hi. This is the old woman who lived in a shoe. You hear that? Soothing music? It just follows me around. Cause I am like a different person now. I married Jack Spratt and live in a house. I quit smoking. But most importantly, I grow a garden. I spend hours out there, weeding, watering, daydreaming. Maybe I'm even meditating a little bit. I don't know. It's only since I started growing things that I hear words like Zen, Karma, and Buddhist, and don't snort in derision. I get it now. I used to be what you call easily angered. Now they called it being triggered. All I know is that I was pissed off all of the time. I remember one time, one of my many kids comes up to me with a Barbie doll. She looks at me, she looks at the Barbie, then she looks back at me. Then she says, Mom, how come you don't look like Barbie? I said, kid, give me the Barbie. I took that Barbie and I melted her butt over an open flame. Then I ran over with the car. Then I pounded her head against the wall. Whack, whack, whack. Then I said, look, kid, now Barbie has stretch marks, a multiple birth butt, and a migraine. Now Barbie looks like mommy. I see now maybe I could have handled that better. Now, these days, I even get along with Mary Mary quite contrary. I'm telling you, something happens when I'm in the garden, smelling the flowers, feeling the dirt, hearing the bees, this sense of calm, this feeling of all is right with the world. Look at this rose. It's... Wait. Is that a Japanese beetle? They're everywhere. Kids, get out here and bring the flamethrower and a a couple of hand grenades. We got work to do. Nobody messes with the old woman's garden. Grow something. It will calm most people most of the time. What an epic journey for old woman. Yes. I can't wait to see what old woman number seven brings to us. Me too. Where's she going to go? Hey, Edith, guess what time it is? What time is it, Christy? It's mailbag time. Ring, ring. We've gotten so many wonderful letters over the last year. Edith, what's your favorite? My favorite letter is from Marsha in Cove, Oregon, because it was the first time, Christy, that we got a letter from someone we didn't know. Because previously, we were asking our family and friends to write into us, and they were so kind and generous, and Mm -hmm. they did. They did, but this one we didn't ask for, and it only took 21 weeks to get a letter from somebody, and we were so excited. Here it is. She starts by saying, hey. Hey. It's a good opening. I binge listened to you ladies from Cove, Oregon to Seattle yesterday. The best thing is that you crack each other up. Oh. So she says, carrot tip. Mix carrot seeds with about a cup of sand, then distribute. Almost no thinning needed. Oh, that's genius. 
And then finally she says, I garden in eastern Oregon, raising about a half an acre of food wow. with a large orchard. We can all our own food for year-round use. Thanks for making my drive to Seattle so fun. Oh, what a nice letter. Wasn't that nice? That was really nice. Thank you. And you know, I looked up to see how far away Cove, Oregon is to Seattle. Yeah. It's over five hours. Wow. So she listened to us. Wow. I the whole she... time. That's a whole lot of Christy and Edith. <laughs> we got binged. Yeah. That was cool. My favorite letter is our first international letter. Ooh. We got a letter from Monique from Australia. This goes to episode 38 on herbs, which is how to grow herbs here today, tarragon tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Dear Christy and Edith, hi from Australia. Thanks for your wonderful podcast. I get so much out of it. I live in subtropical Brisbane, but last year I was in Denver staying with my partner Joe from October to December. He is a great veggie gardener. So I love listening to you two talk about gardening in Colorado and get a little insight to what it's like over there. My only experience so far is valiantly attempting to induce last-minute fruiting and ripening of tomatoes, only to have it snow for three days in a row oh. and turn them all into a pustulant ball of grossness. <laughs> Next time I find myself gardening in a place where it snows, I'll harvest all the tomatoes and put them in an attic instead. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Forget about them and end up with a lovely art installation of various molds. Hmm, oh, Edith, doesn't that sound familiar? I wonder who did that. That sounds so familiar. I know. Uh -huh. That sounds like a really brilliant idea, I think. I think so, too. And maybe the third time it happens, I'll put them in the attic and plaster the house with post-it notes saying, Remember the tomatoes! <laughs> It is good to know that, that that's a handy-dandy thing someone can do. <laughs> Thanks again for the work you do on the podcast. I've learned so much and feel so much more connected to Denver. Love, Monique. And folks, you can still send us your favorite gardening stories, your successes, your flops, your garden questions. We love hearing from you. Who knows? Maybe we'll read it on air or maybe it'll become part of our second anniversary special. Just write to us at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com or check out the show notes. And finally, we always end, from the very beginning we've ended every show, amidst moody music and a smoky atmosphere <laughs> with inspirations. The best way to garden is to put on a wide-brimmed straw hat and some old clothes and with a hoe in one hand and a cold drink in the other, tell somebody else where to dig. <laughs> this is from Texas Bix Bender from Don't Throw in the Trowel. This quote is by the Belgian-American poet, novelist, and memorist, May Sarton. Everything that slows us down and forces patience Everything that sets us back into the slow circles of nature is a help. Gardening is an instrument of grace. Oh, I love that. We needed so much grace after that inspiration, folks, that after we recorded that episode, about five months later, Edith came in and sat down to record her inspiration with the exact same quote. <laughs> I loved it, but I'd forgotten we'd already done it. <laughs> or I could lie and say, I thought you needed to hear it again. That's what it was. That's what it was. Hey, guess what? That was our first anniversary special. Thanks so much for listening to our very special one-year anniversary show. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. And if you got some laughs and some value out of Upside Down Tulips this episode, could you do us a favor? Please go to your phone and share the show on social with a friend who might also appreciate it. Special thanks to our talented actors and kind friends, Billy McBride as the old woman and Karen Slack as Barb. Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. 
If you want to hear more of Denise's music, go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. Another special thanks to our exceptional and easygoing engineer who prefers to be shrouded in mystery and will probably cut this. And a special thanks to our local nursery and friend of the show, Southwest Gardens. Join us next week for our bad jokes, garden updates, mailbag inspiration, and digging into some topic that will amaze and delight you. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Yeah. It's our one year anniversary. Woohoo! Upside down. Happy anniversary, Edith. Happy anniversary, Christy.